In this class, we're focusing on torque and power. You can also think of it as winding up and releasing. And to achieve this, we're going to offset some of the character's body parts. Just to get the impression that the character is winding up for something and then releasing his power to propel himself forward. So we're going to do that with a skateboarding exercise. In 2D, it's a little bit more difficult to show that the body's twisting. We'll do our best with the body pieces that we have, with the torso pieces. So I'm just going to go to my master symbol and dive in and start posing the character out. Something like that for the first pose is good. Now when you're setting these poses, you want to think about line of action. So it runs through the arms here, sort of an S shape, an S curve, and a C curve through the body here. A little bit of a C curve through the body. Okay, so also now we want to think about our timing. So we have to estimate our timing. Now I know that we know that we want to ease out of this pose, the first pose. So we're going to go about, let's say about eight frames down the timeline. So I'm going to count them out, just using the greater than last keys next to the M on the keyboard. So I'm going to go eight frames down the timeline and let's set a key on all the body parts. For this pose, we're just going to ease out of the first pose. So we're just going to move him a little bit. And this is just rough blocking, so it doesn't have to be perfect at first. We're just sort of fleshing this out. And we can turn our onion skinning on if you like. All right, so let's just start easing out of the first pose. Make sure your time marker is on the second, the row of second keys. For the second pose and we'll just move that we're just gonna move it move him a little bit just so we're easing out of that first pose you can drag the foot a little there let's start to bend his knee a little I'm just gonna bend those individually and then move it into place we'll have to shift the entire body down a little bit I'm just gonna move the arms down a little all right so before we go any further let's go back to our first pose and switch the hands out so I'm going to go with something a little different here. We're just easing out of pose one here. So the next major pose is him making con contact with the ground. So let's just go with two frames for that. I'm just estimating the timing here. I know that's going to be a quick movement or I want it to be a quick movement. So I'm only going to use two frames to get to our second major pose here. So I'm going to set a row of keys and then I'll set the pose. Let's go with a different foot here. Okay, so I'm just making adjustments. We want to make sure that foot stays planted. So I'm not moving that right foot at all, the one that's on the skateboard, but I'm going to move everything else. Okay, so because he's using his lower body to propel himself, he's using his legs to push, his arms are going to follow later. We already eased in, but on this pose, we want to, we're still going to continue to uh, pose him according to the second uh, reference here. But we're not going to swing his arms completely forward yet because he's using his legs to push first and then he's going to propel with his arms. So we can start bending the elbows a little bit just to add a little bit of drag. We turn our onion skinning back on to see the previous two poses. So we can add a little bit of drag here just by rotating things back to where they came from in the previous pose. Just a little bit, not too, too much. Just to loosen up those limbs a little bit just so he doesn't feel stiff. Okay, so something like that is okay. Let's go to the next pose. Now he's going to ease into this as well, just like he did, just like he eased out of his first pose, he's going to ease into the last pose. So let's go another eight frames. And let's key him here. So make sure we go to the from top to bottom to key everything. I'm going to go insert keyframe or press F6 on the keyboard. And I'm going to start, I'm going to put him into his last pose here. Notice I'm getting the legs in the right position first and then I'll adjust the body. Move that out of the way for now and for this pose we want to have him leaning forward quite a bit. And I might even switch the torso here. I'm going to flip the torso back around to where it was before just to get him to look like he's arching his back in the opposite direction. And I'm going to rotate his hips. So again, notice the S curve that runs through the arms, just for an appealing pose. All right, so now we have him kicking back. Now we have to have him bring his leg back forward again to get into the first pose again for a complete cycle. So this went up to 19, so we'll go up to 
39. We'll insert some frames. All right, so from here, we wanna quickly go back into the, the pass pose for this, which isn't here, but it's very similar to the middle pose here, except the leg is gonna be uh, crunched up a little bit more. So we're gonna do it quick again. We're gonna go with two frames, and then we'll go with eight frames to get back to the first pose. So I'm gonna go two frames down the timeline, set a key, and we'll just start setting our next pose. Now for this next pose, it's gonna be very similar to this one. I'm gonna keep his back arched, but what we could do is just copy this pose over to the end, and then we'll just, we'll just make adjustments to really just the torso and, and his left leg. We'll copy this pass pose. I'm gonna copy frames. Let's go to the new row of keys that we set, and we'll go paste frames. Okay, so we have our, our pose copied over. Okay, so it's good to scrub back and forth to see what you're doing. I think what I'll do is keep the, the pelvis and the torso very similar to this last pose. So what I can do is copy the torso and pelvis. Let's do the torso first. I'm gonna do the pelvis as well, the upper and lower pelvis. So I'll copy those. And just make sure they're all together properly and we can select all of that and just rotate it. You can skew things a little bit as well and just basically do whatever it takes to get, get them into the pose that you need. And we can copy the first pose we did and paste it at the end, eight frames later. And we'll go to our last pose and we'll we're just gonna count eight frames down the timeline and we'll choose paste frames. Okay, so before we finish blocking this, uh, we wanna create some holds here. We can go to our second pose and shift all this over a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna shift all that over six frames and then I'll go six frames from, from pose one. I'll just count out six and just key that just so that it's a hold. We wanna hold that kicking pose for a bit as well. So let's just, we're just readjusting some of the timing here. So I'm gonna need, need to add some, some, some frames here at the end. So we're gonna insert frames. So we need to basically grab this entire pass pose and everything after it and shift it over six frames. We're gonna go to the kick pose and let's go six frames down the timeline. Okay, so we wanna hold that there. We're gonna set a key. So this is our whole our hold area. And then again, two frames to get into this pass pose. And then we end up back at our first pose again. Loop this to take a look at it. All right, so our blocking is done. Let's move on to refining. So we can just select anywhere in between the first two keys here on the on the head. And we'll just drag down just to get a whole block of key of selections there and we can right click and we'll choose create classic tween. So if we play it now you're going to see all the body parts flipping around. We'll just uh, loop that and play it. Well, at least you can get it you can get a sense of the motion anyways. So for the holes we're okay for the holes for now we'll leave those. The easing is okay as well. This is the point where I really want to uh, scrutinize the timing and see if that's because we want to get the timing right in the blocking stage before we start to in between. From this pose on frame 17 right up until this one, he, I think that can be a lot faster. It's gonna hold after this. So we can drag, it's, we wanna shorten, I wanna, I wanna make this much quicker, this, this whole area here. From the time he plants his foot to the time he kicks up, we'll move everything in to the left a little bit. I'm gonna move it in three frames. And it's a hold, but we can actually use that as an ease as well. So really actually we can bring that in a little, we can bring that in a little bit more just so there's two frames there. Okay, so where he holds on the kickback, we'll ease into that. So we want to have a variation of, of speed in our timing. And you can see we, we already do. We have a nice ease here where it's slow. And then very quick to kick, to push himself. And then this is, this is going to ease as well. And then the, to bring the leg back, it doesn't have to be super quick. So I think that's fine for now. You can speed that up a little bit if you like. So I'm going to trim these frames off. We don't need these frames at the end. So we'll just select those and remove frames. We want to look for those joints breaking apart. There isn't anything here. So between these two there is. So let's fix that. Let's go right on the front. We're just, we're just going to place our time marker right in between those two poses. And let's set a whole row of keys because we're going to move this and that. We're going to move a bunch of pieces 
we don't know exactly which ones we're going to move. So let's just key all of them. It doesn't really make much of a difference. We want to basically we want to keep the joints together. So I'm just going to move things. Basically, put the joints back together and bend them. Okay, so we got that leg. You can scrub through and check it. So that leg's fine now. The torso and head area, the whole center of the body, is fine. And the arms are okay. So let's go from this pose to the next one. Okay, so everything's breaking apart here, obviously. Like we've done in the past, we can just copy this whole leg unit from the previous pose. We can just choose copy frames. And let's paste them. Maybe one or two at a time, it doesn't really matter. Just to speed things up, I'm doing two. And we, we want to bring that back down to where it was, where it's supposed to be. You can turn onion skinning on. You can see the two major poses there. So we'll put that right in between. Or we can favor this one as well. We can favor that so it eases in a little bit. We'll copy the right foot. And we can switch, actually, we can switch the right foot back to number one. Because this is going to, this is going to be a quick movement, so it's a good time to switch the foot during that quick movement. All right, so I'll turn onion skinning off. Let's just scrub through that. All right, so I keyed a few things. We're just going to key that whole row. The thing you want to do is make sure the timing is good before you start doing all this because this is where most of the work is involved. So if, the t if you do all this uh, fixing the in-betweens and the timing isn't looking good, you have to go back and do a lot of fudging in between. So you really want to make sure that timing is looking good before you start to uh, fudge all these. We're just going to grab these arm keys, upper, lower, and hand, and copy them over to the next frame. Just so it's easier, we can adjust it from there. Make sure you keep scrubbing through your animation. So we know that arm has to come forward. We have to swing towards screen, le screen left. So we're going to just swing, start swinging that over, and then we'll just check it. So we'll swing it over a little. You can go ahead and move it so it looks like the, the clavicle is moving. So we're just focusing on one body part at a time here. So at this point, the arms are in a pass pose position. So we're going to bend the elbow and bring his arm in front of his body here. So the leg kicks off first, and then the arms come after. Okay, so let's do that other arm. I'm just going to go to a frame where the arm's stretched out so I can so I can copy those those keys. So we want to select the keys there in the timeline. We'll go copy frames and go to the area where they are jumbled up and we'll paste. And then we have to put it into the right position. So again, we have to think about that right arm. We know it's it's got to come back to end up into this position. So you just want to scrub through and take a look. Again, I know that arm needs to be bent, so I'm going to bring it away, pose it, and then bring it back. This arm's just swung back, so we'll just bring it up a little bit on this on this uh, pose here, on this key. We can continue kicking the leg a little bit back, just a little bit so it eases. And we can just do a little cheat here. We can even just stretch him up a little bit. Okay, so for the next one, he comes into this pass pose with the legs and the arms. So we'll just set a key, we'll set a row of keys here, and then we'll fix them up. All right, so we're just going to go through and connect all the joints. All right, so that area is looking okay. Now we have to worry about this whole area. So it, this, it is something you want to avoid in Flash where you have a, a jumbled up area um, where there's a lot of in-betweens, because you just end up having to key every frame. You generally want to get from one pose to the next rather quickly. But let's just play this now so far and see what we have. Okay, so it's looking pretty good except for that last area where everything gets jumbled up. So we can have that happen a little bit quicker and then just ease into the last pose there. I'm just going to select that whole row. Let's go with four frames. So from here, from our second last pose, one, two, three, four. We need to bring that in two more frames up to 31. That way we're not keying. We're not fixing so many in-betweens. We'll get rid of these extra frames at the end. And let's just fix these in-betweens here. So I'll set a row of keys here. I'm basically going to set a row of keys on every one of these in-betweens. It's just a matter of either moving the joints back into place, just kind of reconnecting the joints and arms. If it gets to a point where it's super jumbled up like this one over here, then you just copy the previous uh, torso and, and paste it. Okay, so I've set rows of keys and fixed all the all the body parts just by connecting the joints and copying and pasting areas over. 
So for the torso, for example, um, between these two, I just switched it uh, in mid-motion. So you want to switch things in mid-motion so you don't notice them as much. You don't notice the flip or the swap. So now if I play that, all right, so that's pretty decent. From there, I might make some fine adjustments here and there. All right, so the thing to note here is that you can see that our, our left leg, we've placed it uh, at the front of the torso here just to make it look like the, the pelvis is rotated in one direction. It's rotated to, to his right. And then the way that we've placed the arms with the clavicle uh, to the back of the, the, the upper torso here, it looks like his upper body is twisted to the left, his left. And then when he switches, when he kicks off, it's like we're looking at his back just from the way that we've placed the arms and the, and the legs. We want to have this twisting motion. And that gives us our torque and power in his, in his movement. So winding up and releasing.